The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 399. Wings are important. A stiff sea breeze blew over Valet's shoulders, ruffling her coat as she climbed the iron switchback staircase bolted to the side of the bridge. Hoof steps against metal sounded in her ears alongside the wind's constant rush, a soft, steady clanking interrupted every time she had to turn around. She crested atop the long, white boulevard stretching west to Stormhood Fortress, the sun low enough on the horizon that the island castle's shadow reached her even on the mainland. Griffins and equins trickled along the bridge in both directions, few enough that it was probably well past rush hour for the day. Some hurried by, late to a meeting or dinner or anything else, but most looked like they'd already be gone if they had anything better to do, and some weren't going anywhere, even though it wasn't the best place to stay and watch the sunset. That meant there were a lot of stares suddenly thrown her way. Valet froze, staring back, then squared her shoulders, puffed out her chest, and flicked her mane, hat wobbling in the breeze. If they wanted to stare, let them. She didn't see a guardhouse, and it wasn't like they could stop her with their eyes. It wasn't like every single gaze was hostile, though. A young mare in a ridiculously tight corset and her wrinkly mother in a wide-brimmed hat snoodily turned up their noses, but a pair of nose-bumping teenagers sitting with their tails intertwined regarded her like she was a sight to be shared with each other and a male griffin pulling a stroller with two of, uh, whatever griffin foals were called even gave her a resigned smile. Grifflets, maybe? And she gave him a wink, just in case. Going to the castle, he asked, not quite making eye contact, but deciding that was permission to talk. You're a bold one. Best of luck to you. Ah, uh, thanks? Valet shrugged. She wasn't particularly sure if he was implying there was something worse than what she had dealt with already there and didn't really want to ask, but he seemed nice enough and good turns at a time like this weren't wise to pass up. Any particular reason, though? I'm pretty tough to punch in the face and get that folks here don't really like bad ponies, but might have just rolled into this area a few hours ago. The Griffin's eyes widened slightly. I won't question your reasons, but as long as you knew this area's reputation, uh, he coughed. You've heard this morning's news, at least? News? The lady raised an eyebrow, suddenly hoping she wasn't about to be called on to save a certain trouble-prone griffin adventure extraordinaire and her other friends from whatever hullabaloo he had dragged them into this time. The griffin nodded gravely toward the castle. A griffin and an airship full of ponies arrived from the trading city of Einridge, and apparently has been invaded by Akiakistan. Everyone is on edge while Stormhoof and the Empire decide how to react, and security has been tightened at the castle. There are a lot more guards, and uh, he trailed off. Like I said, if that's where you're going, good luck. Well, he swallowed. An airship, a griffin, and ponies from Anridge, and news of what had happened. It looked like her friends had gotten themselves in the spotlight after all. And if it had been noted as an airship, that meant whatever sent it below the clouds and left her behind was likely voluntary. Noted, she said, eyes unfocused. Thanks. Any idea where those dudes would be now? The ones from Ironridge? The castle, I presume, the griffin shrugged. Somewhere high up. Couldn't tell you for sure. Valet thanked him one more time and set off at a stiff trot, the island fortress in her sights, suddenly both a much more urgent destination, and one she wasn't sure she wanted to reach after all. The wind picked up as Valet got further out on the water, growing to the point where she had to take her hat off just in case it blew away. That meant she had to settle for her cutesy main cut blowing at her face instead, the two long strands on either side refusing to stay nicely put, but it didn't bother her too much. Her mind was dead set on other things, like why her friends would have left her behind if the ship really could still fly. It had to be a technical issue that forced them below the clouds, even though that explanation had holes like that Griffin saying it was an airship because she knew what the alternative was and the alternative hurt to consider. If she had been deliberately left behind, the bridge felt longer than it had looked from shore, but she made time quicken by counting the arches she passed as the sky reddened and she steadily progressed. The city doubled in size in the horizon, then tripled, 
and then she was close enough to see the gate, a gate that was heavily fortified with guardhouses on either side, and, her cutie mark told her as she approached, a gate guarded by at least one creature who was in a very foul mood. It was also well lit, which had to be for the purpose of aiding guard vision, but completely screwed her over since she couldn't shadow sneak in the torchlight. Why even were there guards when ponies and griffins could just fly in? Valet hissed under her breath, wondering just how bad it would be if she just ran through. But the main gate was closed, with several smaller pony-sized doors set into it, and it would be fairly easy to spear or block someone trying to run through those. With a rush of waves and the creaking of wood, a boat sailed through one of the archways beneath her, and she was half tempted to jump on and see if it took her to one of the island's docks. After some thought and a stretch of her wing, she passed on that. It could be heading to one of the mainland docks, or even back out to sea. Uh, swallowing, she stepped to the center of the bridge and held her head high, proceeding to the gates and hoping for the best. She was stopped flat by a wooden pole to the chest at one of the doors, and she opened her slitted eyes. Yeah? A big face leered back at her. Hello, Cerosian. Great, Valet internally sighed. She didn't know how many guards were on duty, but her cutie mark told her this wasn't one she wanted to be held up by. Mind if I get through, she asked, backing up just enough that the haft of his baton wasn't touching her. I hear this is the way into the city. What's a Cerosian like you doing, trying to get into the city on hoof, the griffin asked, starting to grin. Can't you fly, buddy? I never get to have fun like this. Never, ever, ever. Yo! Fully backed up again, giving him a stink eye and dangerously curling a lip. You're really creepy. Don't they have a creepiness policy when hiring guards? I don't like to get in the city. The guard straightened up, dropping his accent. That's a shame. I thought you kind of liked creepy. Creepy, crawly, slivery. He stepped right back up into her face. It's my job to defend the city from goddess haters like you. Hey, God! An annoyed female voice screeched from further beyond the gate. Are you building a Cerosian? Knock that off! Stupid volunteer crews! Valet suddenly relaxed. Finally, someone who didn't hate bad ponies for a living. A superior was about to let her through. Inventor cutie mark flashed, stopping time. Gord was going straight for her throat, talons outstretched. Talk about overreactions. Instinctively, Valet ducked beneath and then violently arched her back, lifting the griffin and slamming him against the roof of the gate's door, then somersaulting and bringing both hind legs down on him as he hit the floor. She bounced back, leaving him out cold, and looked right into the widened eyes of his captain, standing where he had been with her beak open. We've had an assault, she barked, turning around and shouting back to the city. You free, back me up, you! She turned and snapped at Valet. You're under arrest! He's trying to stab me, Valet protested, backing down the bridge, aware that they could fly much faster than she could run. It was knock out four more and leave herself in an even worse position, or be arrested. She really, really hated the Griffin Empire. It didn't work. The Griffin's reinforcements materialized and they charged, leaving Valet with nothing to do but brace herself. At the last second, though, she heard a creaking of timbers and saw another mast passing out from beneath the bridge, instantly spun to her side and leapt, aiming for the passing boat. This is a swoosh! Four rushes of air sounded as the captain and her other guards dropped to the ship deck, barking at startled sailors and chasing frantically after Valet. Where they didn't look was the roof of the archway where Valet had caught a metal spur and swung herself back into the shadows, hiding there on its underbelly. She was safe, and depending on whether they had left anyone behind to the guard, the gate was temporarily unattended, but without her wings, there was no way back to the top of the bridge. Groaning in exasperation, Valet licked her dry lips, checked both horizons for incoming ships she could drop down to, and settled in to wait. End of chapter 399